Hello grade 9 science class, welcome back to another lecture. As you can see, this is lesson 9, using Ohm's law for series circuits. So as I mentioned, we are going to apply the calculations that we learned to series and parallel circuits. Uh, the first is series. So we're going to learn about as key points up here, key point 1, current in series circuits, resistance in series circuits, and what we call a voltage drop, which happens in series circuits. I'm going to do some explaining with um, some small examples. I'm going to do some simpler examples. They're going to get more complex and then you're going to be expected to do them. So that'll how this will work and I believe the next lesson as well when we talk about parallel circuits. Let's jump in. So current in series again key point one. The current in a series circuit, as we talked about last time, is always the same, no matter where on the circuit we are measuring. Even if there are multiple loads, as we have here, multiple loads or resistors uh, or switches, uh, the circuit, uh, the current in the circuit will always be the same. In the diagram, you can notice that one amp here, here, here is continuously flowing throughout this circuit because everything is in series. So that is a rule. You should note that. Like rule number one for series circuits, the current is the same everywhere. And it's very handy to know that. We can apply that. If we know the current in one place, we can know the current in the all, all the rest. Resistance in series. So in a series circuit, the total resistance goes up if you add resistors. But we didn't really say how that worked. Um, essentially what happens is the total resistance is equal to um, the total of all of the resistors. So adding the resistance across each load or resistor will give us the total. So R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Uh, we have then 2 plus 2 plus 3, 2 plus 2 plus 3 for 7 ohms and R total is 7. So the resistance for the entire thing is 7. So if you're given resistances, you can just add them up, and that is the resistance for the entire circuit. Um, one thing I'll draw your attention to is you'll notice that the electrons start here in the negative end and flow this way, but they number the uh, resistors 1, 2, 3 the opposite way. And that's because, as I mentioned uh, a bunch of lessons ago, maybe in lesson 3 or 4, Conventional current, or the way that electricians write it, is that the current would be flowing this way. So R1 would be first and R2 would be second, so the electrons are flowing this way. Remember, conventional current and the actual flow of electrons, the difference between that. So just so that you know and you don't get confused, they are actually writing them how they would write them as if conventional current was being used. Um, so we can use Ohm's law in series. If we know the voltage and we know the resistance total, we can find the um, overall um, amperage, which would be the current. Uh, let's do that here real quick. And we'll just know that this is its own example. Uh, this is not applied to the next example. Uh, so we have our problem. We know the voltage is equal to 12 volts, and we already calculated the total resistance, the RT, was 2 plus 2 plus 3, which was 7 ohms. And we are looking for what the current is. Now, uh, we should use the triangle. I believe voltage goes on the top, current and resistance goes here. So if I'm looking for current, I'm going to take voltage and divide it by resistance. I have those two. So I'm going to have I is equal to voltage, which is 12, divided by 7, the resistance. And the current is, let me grab my calculator. I want prepared this time. Let's see if it turns on. Yes, it does. Okay. 12 divided by 7 equals 1.71 amps. Okay, so that would be the current in this circuit. So we have uh, found out the current for the entire circuit. So we had to add up all the resistance to find out what the entire resistance of the circuit was. 
first. So that's very, very important, that part of it. A voltage drop. Uh, a voltage drop is the amount of voltage that is quote unquote used up. So remember, voltage is a difference. So that amount of energy can be used up and the difference between that point and the point after it can end up being less. So when we have 12 total volts, um, we, it can be split up equally if the resistors are equal. So if you were to place a voltmeter in the places where the red arrows are pointing, we would find that across here we would have six volts and across here we would have six volts. That is because um, these are equal. Half the voltage would go to R1 and half the voltage would go to R2. The voltage across all the loads is equal to the total voltage. So you add it up just like resistance. Uh, we're going to do some examples where we find these voltage drops. Uh, if we know the current and we know the um, resistance, we can find the voltage drop. Uh, so let's do, oh, one more slide and then some examples. So the voltage across the loads in a series, if we're looking at uh, to find the voltage drop, the, to uh, the total voltage is equal to the sum of all the voltages uh, in the circuit. Um, but if we want to find just one, we know the current throughout the entire circuit, and we know the resistance for that part, so we would multiply them together to get the voltage drop. Voltage drop is equal to current times the resistance size. The voltage drop is always directly proportional to the size of the resistor. We'll get into some problems and these words will hopefully make sense when we get to actually doing it. So we have an example. We have a circuit here. So I gotta go all the way across. Clunky. We have an example here uh, where we want to find the voltage uh, across the uh, drop uh, across the resistor and that is this one right here sorry for the sound right there that is what we want to find for voltage and we want to find the total current throughout this circuit so these are all in parallel or in series so the current will be the same throughout the entire thing these voltmeters remember are not parallel circuits. They are just measuring devices. So we have voltmeters here. Those do not count as parallel um, circuits. So to find the voltage across uh, the resistor, we would need to be able to find the total voltage. And that's given to us. The voltage total is given to us as 25 volts at the battery. Now we know that each resistor will use up a proportional amount of voltage and all of the voltage will be used up. So I have volt one using nine volts and I have um, number, we'll call it three on the other side using six volts. So that means that these two equal a total of 15 volts, which would mean we have 10 volts left. So the voltage across that resistor would be equal to 10 volts, 25 minus 15. Um, what we want to know as well is what the current is in this circuit. Well, this one actually gives it to us. We just need to pick it out, three amps. So this um, ammeter is along the circuit as we know it should be, and it has three amps shown here. So the current, in this circuit is three amps. That one's a fairly straightforward example, but with these problems, you might need to find these things out in different ways. Let's go to our next problem. So in this one, we have the voltages across each resistor, but what we're looking for is the uh, voltage uh, across the battery, or what is the total voltage? So the total voltage is equal to the sum of all the uh, individual voltages. So the total voltage would be three plus five plus four volts. That equals a 12 volts. So that is a 12 volt battery. Is our answer for the total voltage. And it's asking us for the current as well. 
Oh, that one's given to us. So the current is four. So understanding that the current is the same throughout. So that example would give us a current of four. Let's try a more complex example. We're not going to be doing E or F in this case. Uh, I forgot to cover them, it looks like, but we won't be doing E or F, we're just doing A through D. So we're given the following series circuit. Uh, the first question is for us to find the total resistance. In a series circuit, to find the total resistance, we need to add up all of the resistors. We're given all the resistors. So RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. That would be equal to 4 plus 5 plus 3. And I just did this. That's 12 ohms. 4 plus 5 plus 3 is 12. So that is the total resistance for the circuit. Um, now that we have the total resistance and we're given the total voltage, that's 24, it's given on the battery or the cell. So um, total voltage is equal to 24 volts. We have enough information to find out what the current would be and that is question two or D I should say. We should use our triangle. Don't be afraid to draw this triangle. Memorize it. I, R, and what we're going to be looking for is current. So we cover up the I, I is equal to V over R. That would be equal to 24 divided by 12. Conveniently, I is equal to two amps. And that is the answer for question B. When we know that the voltage is 24 and the resistance for the circuit is 12, um, we can find the total the current of the circuit to be two. For C, the question asks us the current through each resistor. Uh, the current through each resistor in a series circuit, so all would, I don't know why I put an O there, of course, all would be the same. The current is the same no matter where you are on a, a series circuit. Current is the same. We found this, uh, the current to be two, so that means the current would be two. And now we're gonna do D, which is covered by my mouse, of course. We'll do D. D asks us to find the voltage drop across each resistor. So we wanna write some things down from our last paper. Uh, the current we found in the entire um, circuit to be two amps. So that is important. We have that for all these questions. And then we also know the individual resistors. We know that there is four ohms, five ohms, and three ohms. So let's do um, resistor one first. So the voltage drop for resistor one is equal to, let's draw a triangle again. It's good practice just to keep drawing it on each new paper, D, I, R. The voltage drop would be equal to I times R can't really see that, it'll come from this way. I times R, because those are next to each other. It's equal to I times R. And we know that the current is two, and the resistance across number one was four, so the total voltage drop would be eight volts. That is for number one. We can do the same for number two, for voltage drop two. The current times the resistance. The current is two. The resistance was five for a total of 10 volts of a drop for number two. And then let's do voltage drop three. Again, it's I times R. The current is equal to two. And the resistance for number three was three for a total of six volts. The moment of truth to find out if we got this right. It's really, really important that we do this last step of checking. So we found out that we have eight, 10, and six volts. Does that equal the total volts? Because the voltage drop across each one added up should equal the total. The total was 24. 
8 plus 10 is 18, plus 6 is 24. That works. That is great. That means we must have done this correctly. So voltage drop 1 is 8, voltage drop 2 is 10, and voltage drop 3 was 6. And they're proportional to the size of the resistors. The largest resistor has the largest voltage drop. The smallest has the smallest. I think we have one more problem. One more to do. Yes. So, number one, determine the equivalent resistance. This is a series circuit. Equivalent resistance means we add them up. The total is equal to 20 plus 30 plus 50 ohms. So that's 100 ohms for a total resistance. Uh, question two wants us to find out what the current is. Okay, let's draw. We, we, okay, we have the resistance. So we have R equals 100 ohms. And it gives us the voltage to be 125 volts. We should draw our triangle like that to find out that to find the current we need to divide these two we cover that one up find the current so current is equal to uh, voltage divided by resistance which is equal to 125 divided by 100 so the total current i is equal to 1.25 amps that is the current throughout this entire series circuit. So this was the answer for one. This is the answer for two. We now wanna find out what the current through each resistor is. Well, in a series circuit, the current through each resistor is always the same. Always the same in series. So that's 1.25 amps. And it is always the same. The current is the same throughout. We just found the current. So that's real good. Now we want to find the voltage drop across each resistor. So let's see. The voltage drop across each resistor. Let's drag some things over here. We knew that the current is 1.25 amps. So that's important. And now we know that each individual resistor would have each uh, voltage drop. So resistor 1 is equal to 20. Let's draw our triangle one more time. Good measure, voltage, current, resistance. What am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the voltage. So voltage is equal to I times R, which is equal to I is 1.25, R is 20. So that means the voltage drop is equal to, I think it's going to be 25. It's definitely 25. So this let me, let me double check. 1.25 times 20, yes, is 25 volts. So that is for the resistor number one. Let's do resistor two, which is 30 ohms. Voltage is equal to uh, current, which is 1.25 times the resistance, which is 30. So the voltage is equal to 38 volts. Let me check that one more time. 35 times 30. Ha, huh, so close. Well, this is 37.5 volts. I was off by 0.5. 37.5 volts. And then we have resistor number three, which was 50 ohms. Voltage is equal to 1.25 times 50, which would equal, the voltage would equal 62.5 volts. So this is for number three, this one is for number two, and this one here is for number one. So in the moment of truth to see if we got it right, we should add it up to get 125. Um, 62 and a half plus 37 and a half gets us 100 plus 25 is 125. So that means that we did it correctly. So this is a little bit of math, a little bit challenging. If you guys have questions, please let me know. But I believe that we can work through it uh, together. 
So definitely do the practice. There's lots of practice for these ones. I can possibly find more. And there's going to be lots of practice in parallel circuits as well. So thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you soon.